Good morning, good morning, good morning. How y'all doing this Saturday morning? It is April the 11th. <laughs> so anyways, I know I'm a little behind in videos, been a little bit busy, self-quarantine really doesn't apply to me, but it's okay. Let's get into this. Dominic Brazil calls out Dillian White. A little late on it, but it's all right. We're going to talk about it because my point of view on this is a little different than everybody else. I think this is a smarter fight for Dillian White than fighting Pavekin. Why is that? Why would I think that? Because here's the thing with Pavekin. Very good fighter. Very skilled fighter. Very seasoned fighter. His fault. The best of the best when they were the best. Cannot take away his experience. However, in his last fight against Michael Hunter, you're seeing a fighter who is aged. You're seeing him pretty much being on his last leg. He's at the end of his career. And truth be told, I don't think either one of these fights will be that competitive for Dillian White. Maybe Pavekin early. But after that, I don't think either fight's competitive. Now, going back to Pavekin. When you saw him fight Michael Hunter, Pavekin got down on the cards early. Because when you get old, the first thing that leaves you is speed and agility. Your, your fast switch slows down. You saw when Michael Hunter blitzed him, Pavekin was just too slow to keep up. There's nothing he could do. Had Pavekin been younger, Michael Hunter, nine times out of ten, would have been knocked out within that first six rounds. Michael Hunter, by no means, is a good heavyweight. He's not a top-tier heavyweight. He's not really going to go anywhere in the heavyweight division. A great cruiserweight, but... I just don't feel Michael Hunter is going to make for a good heavyweight. Back to the point of this. With you knowing that Pavekin is on his last leg, is that really a legitimate win? I mean, it is a win, but is it really legitimate? I don't think it is because you can't fight somebody like Marius, then fight somebody like Pavekin, and the whole time be making fun of Wilder for fighting somebody like Ortiz. Now, granted, Ortiz is probably much older than them, but the point is, you can't fight two old people back to back if you're going to make fun of people for fighting old people, okay? That's just not a good look. So, I, I feel like Dominic Brazil is the better choice. Now, Pavekin has been ranked higher and has always been ranked higher than Dominic Brazil. has fought harder competition, like I said earlier, but again... It's kind of like the Canelo Kovalev. I don't really take much from that because Kovalev's on his last leg. Kovalev's been knocked out twice, now a third time, and almost got knocked out in his fight prior to Canelo against Anthony This Ain't Your Yard, boy. In the one round that Yard had success. The same can be said about Pavek and, and Dillian White. I just feel like, I mean, it's a good fight. I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! what do they say somebody must be talking about you <laughs> sorry y'all i'm just waking up like always but back to the point the point is it's the same thing pavekian is on his way out it doesn't do much now going back to dominic brazil what has dominic brazil done dominic brazil has now fought both aj and wilder he was not successful against either. He got knocked out by both. Dominic Brazil is a perfect, perfect example to be made. You're dealing in white. You've been calling out Wilder forever. You're dealing in white. You have your pro loss to AJ. And eventually you're going to want to fight him again. So you need that example to be made. Dominic Brazil is that example. Fight a guy that both men have fought. Now, can White beat Brazil better than um, Wilder did? I highly doubt it because Brazil got knocked out so quickly. <laughs> and, and Wilder's a much faster fighter than White, whereas White is more methodical with how he breaks you down. All three men can hit hard. Um, I was going to say Wilder is probably the hardest hitter, but seeing that he did like no damage... Didn't hurt Tyson Fury once when Tyson Fury was coming straight at him. I don't know how hard of a hitter he really is. 
Again, we've never seen Wilder in there with a top-tier fighter outside of Fury. Ortiz is not a top-tier fighter. He beat Brian Jennings and nobody else. He's 95 years old. <laughs> so, this is not a top-tier fighter. He's never been a top-tier fighter. It's a false narrative. That's, it's just a lie that's been said enough to where people started believing it. That's all it is. So, my thing is this. Dominic Brazil is an example to be made. He's a very easy opponent to beat when you're a power puncher like Dillian White because he doesn't move his head. He stands still. He's there to be hit. If you hit hard, the only thing you want is for somebody to stand still. That is like a Christmas present wrapped up with a nice little bow on it for you. That's the type of fight you want to fight. Easy fight. Now, the, the negative to this is it will not hone Dillian White's skills. He's been fighting hard competition. I mean, you could say Marius wasn't his hardest fight, but again, he only had, what, three weeks to prepare for it after not doing anything for six, seven months? So he looked good in that fight with all that considered. Dominic Brazil is not one of them guys that you're going to fight that's going to make you better. Dominic Brazil, I guess, has a puncher's chance because he did hit Wilder. He did hurt Wilder in their fight, as short as it lasted. So he did hurt Wilder. He did keep AJ at bay for a little while. So the question is, can Dominic Brazil hurt Dillian White when he hits him? Which, if he can't hurt him, then that shows you Dillian White is more durable. And if by some fluke chance that Dillian White, I, I won't even say fluke, but if by some chance Dillian White fights different and comes out quick and knocks him out even faster in a more devastating style than Wilder did, then that devastating win will prove that he really is the man. He really is the man, especially in the WBC rankings. And Dominic Brazil has always been in the WBC rankings as well. So if that's the belt that you're going for, that's the belt that you're mandatory for. And truth be told, it's a less risk fight. That would be the better option. Because if, if White loses to anybody, he's losing that mandatory slot. He loses to Pavekin. He's no longer fighting Wilder or Tyson Fury, whoever wins in their third fight. If he loses to Dominic Brazil, then Dominic Brazil will get another chance and probably get blitzed out again. So the point is, in my opinion, I think it would be smarter for Dillian White to fight Dominic Brazil. There's less to lose and there's only more to gain. He's younger. You can set an example by beating him worse. Like, truth be told, Dillian White doesn't even need to knock out Dominic Brazil as fast as, as um, Deontay Wilder did to, to prove a point. He could literally batter this dude and, and not try to finish him. He could hurt him round after round after round after round after round after round after round until Dominic Brazil gives up. If, if I was in Dillian White's position, that's what I would do. I wouldn't even go for a fast knockout. I would try to embarrass this dude. I would try to hurt him to show that this dude isn't even on the same level as me. And if you can prove that he's not even on the same level, he shouldn't even have got in the ring with you, then that right there speaks for itself as well. Like I said, Dominic Brazil is the example to be made. It is actually the smarter fight. It is actually the easier fight. And then you can't get into that stigma of people saying, well, you only fight old fighters too. Luis Ortiz was old. You made fun of water. So how are you going to fight two old guys back to back? Regardless of skill of Pavekin, he's still old. So how are you going to fight two guys that old back to back? To me, it's just a better look to go for Dominic Brazil. Easier fight. You could probably pay Dominic Brazil way less money, so you pocket way more money. And if you do it in England, people in England who keep up with boxing a lot more than we do in America nowadays, they already know Dominic Brazil because he was there against AJ. He's already been to England. So he's a household name. Pavekin's a, a big name too. I mean, both guys, I don't know. Like money-wise... Maybe Pavekin brings in more money, but I don't really see Pavekin doing huge numbers. Yes, he's a big name to, to boxing fans, but when you try to catch like casuals, sometimes casuals go by the look, how somebody looks. And to me, if you didn't know anything about boxing and you were just looking, Dominic Brazil's taller, bigger, younger, and in better shape. So... I think that the smart choice, again, aesthetically, 
to the casual would be Dominic Brazil. I think with the, the opportunity to make that example, Dominic Brazil's the better choice. And I just think there's less likelihoods of an upset, a loss happening with Dominic Brazil. And you have so much more to gain by beating Dominic Brazil. If you want to fight Pavekin to hone up your skills, do it after Brazil. Or do it after you win the title. Then take him on. Then take on AJ. Whatever the course is, I understand that when you fight harder opponents, you get better naturally. Your muscle memory gets better. You've seen more looks. You can adapt, adjust, and I'm going to bring them up again like Mayweather. <laughs> you can start analyzing your opponents much better as you see more and more looks and as you fought harder and harder competition. It doesn't really do you a lot of good to fight tomato cans amass a big sponged record it looks good to again the casual but the people who know boxing to boxers inside of boxing a guy with a padded record isn't scary and most of the time when guys with padded records get up to that upper tier and they actually step up in competition they lose and they look bad losing just like we saw happen with Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder Deontay Wilder had no idea how to fight going backwards. He had no idea how to fight in the pocket. The only opportunity he has is when he can create space. I already did the breakdown. I don't need to do it again. If you want to hear the breakdown I did before the fight when I predicted that Tyson Fury can knock Wilder out in the eighth round, go to my video list or I might put it in the description. But again, so there are benefits of fighting better fighters to hone up your skills. But I feel like Dillian White should be sharp enough to where he doesn't need to fight back in to be ready for Wilder, Fury, or especially Fury, or AJ. I mean, when you're talking about the height difference between AJ and Wilder and White, it's not much. But Fury, you're going up even more, so you need to fight a, a whole different style. Like, Dominic Brazil would be better because he's taller. You don't want to fight guys who are shorter than you. When you're looking at fighting Fury, who's much taller than you. Like when you're, I think Dillian White's 6'4", AJ 6'6", Wilder 6'7". You're only talking about a couple of inches difference. But then when you jump up to 6'9", who not only is 6'9", but when he gets up on his tippy toes, because he's so light-footed and he's always moving around. So really, truthfully, you're fighting a guy who's around 6'10 to 6'11", in the ring moving, and then... Tyson Fury has extremely long arms as well. So there's a lot of reasons why a Pavekian wouldn't help you hone up your skills to fight somebody like that. So anyways, let me know what y'all think. I think Dominic Brazil is the better choice in my opinion for the reasons that I said. I disagree with the channel saying that Dominic Brazil doesn't deserve a chance. Well, I agree he doesn't deserve a chance, but I believe that he is the better fight for Dillian White. Again, let me know what y'all think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Sub to the channel. And before I go, I want to touch on something. There is a guy who's been commenting on my videos who wants me to look up rabbit punches that Deontay Wilder throws. I'm going to try to do that today. If not today, tomorrow I'll put up a video. But um, he wrote something to me that made me take down a video, delete a comment off the other dude's video. And I say, dude, y'all know who I'm talking about. But the comment that he wrote to me was, he likes the way I carry myself. I don't try to act like his, his words, I believe, was a street thug, I think he said. And, you know, it made me think to myself. Even though this dude made a fake name of me, a fake picture of me, and everything that he did, right, all the lies that he tried to tell, I don't have nothing to prove. I don't need to walk around throwing around my weight because me and that dude knows the truth. He ran from me. So the bottom line is I'm not going to be doing no YouTube beef because for somebody to say that I carry myself better, I'm going to try to keep my standards higher, if that makes sense. So again, Thank y'all for watching. If you like what you heard, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, go ahead and sub to the channel. If you one of them two people who used to give me two thumbs down that disappeared, go ahead and do that too. Thank you very much for watching. I'm out.